Hi, I'm Denise Lee Yan. I am a keynote speaker, consultant, and author on the topic of brand leadership. Two of my cornerstone books are What Great Brands Do, The Seven Brand Building Principles That Separate the Best from the Rest, and my most recent book, Fusion, How Integrating Brand and Culture Powers the World's Greatest Companies. Well, you know, as a brand person, I kind of have to default to some of the, the standard examples. And I didn't want to talk about Apple or Nike or Virgin, but I did want to talk about Starbucks because it is a brand that has really stood out to me over time. I think the number one thing that sets Starbucks apart is that they have a very um, compelling purpose or mission for their company and values that guide everything they do. And they really seek to live those out, uh, everyone in the organization, from the CEO to the frontline barista at the coffee shop, to really bring that, that mission and those values to life for, for customers. So I definitely admire Starbucks for that first uh, um, attribute, which is to start with your culture. And in fact, in my book, What Great Brands Do, the number one brand building principle I talk about is that great brands start inside. They start by cultivating a strong brand-led culture inside their organization. So brand building and marketing has evolved a lot and changed very quickly in the last few years. You know, there are all these developments in what uh, content marketing and search marketing and social media and influencer marketing. There's so many other ways to connect and communicate with customers than companies had in the past. But I would say probably the number one thing that has changed is the importance of the customer experience in brand building. So as a customer, we no longer you know, look at a company's messaging or their advertising to know what they're really like. We, we actually experience them or we read reviews or get word of mouth from our friends about what these brands are really like. And the experience that people have is what shapes people's perceptions about a brand. So these days, companies really need to be attending much more to every aspect of the customer experience and how each one of those touch points, each one of those interactions brings your brand to life, differentiates you, provides unique value to your customers, and that's how you build a great brand. Gosh, you know, digital has changed everything for brand building. You know, there's um, a lot more choice out there. You know, there are a lot more brands out there. And I think that the proliferation has happened because it's so much easier to start a brand or initiate a brand or be a brand on a digital platform. You know, there's um, less time and space to make a connection with a brand. Instead of having a 60 second advertisement where you can actually explain what you do and why you do it and how you do it, you have, you know, a little 140 character message that you're trying to communicate to a customer through or a very small Instagram picture that you're trying to, to, to connect with someone over. And so the limitations on brands has changed. Um, there's also, I think, a lack of control that companies have now over their brand perceptions because of digital, because of social media, and because of the um, e-commerce channels like Amazon that companies need to interact through. So they are less in control of the brand experience and kind of how brand perceptions are, are developed. And at the same time, customers' expectations have been elevated. You know, we customers have been trained by the best companies in the world to expect to get what we want, when we want it, how we want it, where we want it, and that's what customers are expecting from you today. I talk about the brand as business management approach as something that you do as a company leader using your brand to drive align and guide everything you do as a business. So it's a management approach, you know, just like kind of maybe Six Sigma was a while ago or the service profit chain, service profit chain. These are philosophies about how you run your business. And in this case, what I'm talking about is using your brand as a filter and a compass and a guide for everything that you do. So brand building is no longer kind of a marketing function that's kind of done off to the side, separate from your core operations, but brand building is actually a strategic 
leadership responsibility. It's something that you do as a company to set the culture of your organization, to figure out your competitive strategy and your offerings, and then to actually deliver an exceptional customer experience. The truth is none of us have the big brands that we want to have, right? You build a great brand by starting inside, understanding that great brands are built from the inside out. If you want to be known as an innovative brand, then you better be cultivating an innovative culture in your organization. If you want to be known as a premier entertainment brand, well, then everyone in your organization needs to be oriented around creating premier entertaining experiences. So your job as a leader is to really cultivate that culture, ensure that you have a clear overarching purpose that guides everything that everyone does and values that prescribe the attitudes and behaviors that you want people to, to embrace in their work. And then you like, kind of un unleash and, empo and empower and inspire your people to bring that purpose and values to life in the, their sphere of work, you know, so it's not just a marketing thing, but it's also in your operations and service and sales and all the back office functions. Everyone in your organization needs to be oriented and engaged with your brand.